Hi, my name is Jonathan Mopitsi. I'm a web journalist with CBC Montreal. Um, we're welcome to our Facebook Live. We'll be taking your questions for the next 10 or 15 minutes or so. We're going to try to get to as many of them as you can. So please send us your questions in the comments section below. I'm standing outside the mosque where a uh, dramatic shooting happened on Sunday night. Six people were killed. Five people were seriously injured. Um, the, the members of the mosque have opened the mosque. It's now uh, no longer considered a crime scene by police. Um, so the, the members of the mosque are, are starting to come in. You, you'll probably see uh, members um, walk into the, to the, to the mosque behind me. Early this morning, the mosque leaders invited media inside, so we were able to look at uh, some of the, uh, the the prayer room where where the shooting took place. It's very emotional. It's a very emotional scene. You can see here, perhaps, uh, where the tape is on the window. Those are those are bullet holes, and you can obviously see as well that um, we have a few flowers here. What you can't see just behind the camera. There's a huge array of flowers and signs and messages of hope that community members have been leaving for uh, the Muslim community here. Um, and also not far from here, uh, just further to my right here, is, uh, is an old church where, which has kind of become an impromptu vigil spot. Again, huge numbers of, of uh, cards and messages of hope for the community here. So um, just waiting for your, for your questions now. And uh, we have one from uh, Chantal Boucher who asks, is there any more information on the motive of the attacker? Uh, thanks for the question, Chantal. Right now, we don't have very much information about his motive. Um, you can go to our, our, our website. We, we've tried to offer as comprehensive a profile as we can offer at this time of the suspect. 27-year-old man by the name of uh, Alexandre Bissonnette. Um, what we do know about this suspect is that he was a university student at Laval, uh, Laval University, not far from here. He seems to have held uh, moderate conservative beliefs uh, for some period of time. And then uh, friends uh, told us yesterday that in the past year or so, he uh, his, his beliefs seem to have radicalized. Um, he espoused some uh, support for, for uh, President Trump, uh, for Marine Le Pen. He had a reputation as some, something of an online troll. Now, it's important to keep in mind that um, he's, he's a suspect, he's been charged, but he hasn't been found guilty of any crime, so a lot of this is, is, is just hypothetical. Um, <clears throat> let's see uh, what other questions we're, we're getting. Josie asks, uh, have you got any word about the reason this person acted the way he did? Was it an act of terrorism or an act from a mentally ill person? That's something that uh, has left to be decided. Now, one uh, about the, the terrorism element, it's important to point out so far he hasn't been charged with uh, terrorism related offenses. He's been charged with uh, six counts of murder and five counts of attempted murder with a firearm. Um, RCMP told us uh, earlier that there's a, still a possibility that, he, that uh, Mr. Bissonnette could face more charges. They could include terrorism charges. But for the, for the time being, he doesn't face any terrorism charges. About his, his, his uh, mental health, that's pure speculation at this moment. We, I really can't advance uh, any comment about that. Um, so that, that's something I'm sure that'll, that'll be um, discussed in, in, the, in the days to come. There, there may be, oftentimes in cases like this, uh, the Crown may ask or the defense may ask for a psychiatric evaluation. We don't know if that's happened yet, but um, we will certainly keep you apprised of any details uh, of that as they come in. And another question here from Josh Mazur. How is the community dealing with the aftermath of the shooting? That's a great question. It's obviously come as a huge shock to the community. Um, and I think what's very interesting is to see the community members who who've showed up this morning. Um, so this is really the, the, the first time the mosque has been open again. Um, and, and yet there's been a, about a half dozen dozen people who from the community have come, um, pay their respects. Uh, one woman came and, 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 and prayed briefly. The, the, the community is in a state of shock, but they're also uh, banding together. Uh, Obviously, the last past few days, members haven't been able to use this mosque to pray, but they've been going to, to other mosques in the area to pray there. Families have, have been reaching out, supporting each other, 
and there's really uh, um, they're gearing for a series of difficult conversations in the days to come. How do you how do you explain this to children? How do you explain this uh, to 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 a young child who does not yet know what death is, who doesn't yet appreciate what hate and Islamophobia is? So. The, the community members have been telling us that they're, they're starting to have those conversations, but they're preparing for a very difficult series of months ahead as they, as they deal with the, the trauma of the shooting. Uh, Wilf Robinson asks, has he been charged with any crimes before this? Uh, police uh, said he was not known to them. That is uh, usually police... Um, slang for saying he had no uh, criminal record. Um, other media have reported he had a, maybe a few parking tickets, but other than that, there uh, is no criminal background um, on record for, for the person who's been charged with the crimes. Kelly asks, uh, how are those who were seriously injured? So we've been getting updates uh, periodically from uh, hospital staff about their, their condition. Uh, at the moment, I believe and uh, some of my colleagues can, can double check this and, and provide more up-to-date information in the comments section below. But I believe uh, at last count there were two people who were still in, in considered in critical condition. Uh, the range of, of injuries was obviously quite, quite, quite large. Um, for in the, in, at least in the immediate aftermath, there were five people who were considered in critical condition, um, obviously mostly with, with gunshot injuries. Uh, they've undergone a series of operations uh, at the moment two in critical condition but uh, at latest at latest information from the hospitals doctors do not fear for uh, their life they're obviously facing serious injuries but th their lives at the moment are not in danger uh, paul asks who was the second guy why don't you say anything about him so that's a important question and um, let me address that what happened in the in the moments immediately after the the shooting police made two arrests one person was arrested uh, not far from here and a second person was arrested on the other side of town about five kilometers from here it is um, information started to circulate in in um, that there were two suspects police then revised that it is believed that the person who was arrested close to the mosque was not in fact a suspect. He turned out to be a witness, uh, a mosque member. Um, you can again go to our website. We, we have uh, his, his testimony, what happened to him, a, a story on cbc.ca. You can, you can read his account. Um, so it's important to point out that uh, there's only, at the moment, only one person who believes to be involved in the shooting. Um, the, 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 the second person is no longer considered as a suspect. It's considered an important witness for police. Um, and, uh, and that's where things stand now. Um, Saba Tarek asks, what is the security situation in, the, in Quebec at the moment? Both in Quebec City and around the province, police have stepped up uh, uh, patrols and, uh, and, and their presence around mosques. Um, but even before uh, Sunday night's attack, several mosques in Quebec uh, have felt uh, targeted by various Islamophobic incidents. Uh, this mosque in particular has security cameras, both, you can see one right there, both inside and outside the mosque. Um, this, this mosque uh, was the site of a, of a particularly uh, egregious um, Islamophobic incident uh, last year when somebody left a pig's head during the month of Ramadan. Um, Muslims, of course, don't eat don't eat pork. Uh, Ramadan being the, the holy month of, of uh, in Islam, and they left a, a pig said with the note "Bon appetit." Now that was only one uh, of a particular uh, series of Islamic incidents at, at this mosque. And other mosques in Quebec have reported uh, other incidents as well. So the fact that they've they felt a certain level of insecurity has prompted many mosques in the pro province to add measures like security cameras, like the ones you see here. Uh, Jason Goodwin asks, what are the weapons he used and were they legally obtained? That information is still um, coming out. We don't have all the details there. Police sources told uh, my colleagues at Radio Canada yesterday that they recovered two weapons. One, a long gun. They're not specifying what type. Other 
Uh, initial reports described it as looking like an AK-47. Whether or not it was an AK-47 an AK still to be determined. The other weapon they recovered was a 9mm handgun. Um, that had a, a capacity of about a 15 round capacity. Um, we do know, uh, so, so police recovered those, those weapons. We do know separately from that, that uh, Mr. Bissonnette had a, a 9mm handgun registered to his name. So uh, at the very least, um, he had one registered uh, firearm in, in, uh, in his possession. Friends of his also told us that he was a, a hunter. He enjoyed hunting. Uh, beyond that, I, I can't speculate in terms of uh, the type of, ammuni of ammunition or the, the type of weapons that were used uh, during the attack. Um, but I, I'm, I'm certain that as those details come forward, we'll, we'll get them back to you as soon as we can. Um, if you're just joining us, uh, once again, my name is Jonathan Mopetzi. I'm, I'm a web journalist for CBC Montreal. I uh, was dispatched to Quebec City uh, late in, in the evening Sunday night. So we've, we've been here since then uh, gathering stories, trying to get as much information to you as, as we can. Um, please feel free to, to, to ask us questions in the comment section below. We're going to get to as many of them as, uh, as we can. Um, let's, uh, let's take a few more. Suzanne Gauthier asks, where can we make donations to help the families? That's, a, that's an interesting question. I don't have that information on me at the moment. I do know there are various uh, GoFundMe initiatives. Uh, the mosque here is also uh, doing fundraising. I believe you can go to the mosque's um, Facebook page. I think there's information there. Um, also, my colleagues will uh, try to get you that information and, and provide it in the comment section below. So check back in a few minutes and we'll try to, we'll try to get that information to you. Marlene St. Ange asks, has his twin brother or family spoken about him? Did they have any concerns? Uh, as far as I know, the, the family members and, and his twin brother, Mathieu, have not spoken to media. Um, we believe they've met with police officers. We know that police officers have searched the, the family's home in, in St. Foy, uh, sorry, in Cap Rouge. Um, we also know that, that police uh, searched the um, search the, the 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 apartment building where uh, Alexandre lived with his twin brother not far from here um, we're just gonna take a pause for a moment on your questions because we have a member of the the of the, of the, the mosque here with me now and we're gonna just ask him a few questions um, about uh, about the situation here and uh, just going to put on a glove here a microphone Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, maybe you can uh, tell our viewers first just who you are and, and what your role is, is yeah. in the community. My name is Ahmed El Rifai. Uh, I'm uh, the responsible of the religious affairs in, in, in the administration of the mosque. Why was it important for you to, to open the mosque's doors uh, this morning? Actually, uh, out of responsibility and the transparency for, for our Muslim community in the beginning and uh, to all Canadians to see what happened and to, 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 to try to say that it's a turning point, guys, to stop these hate crimes and these, uh, these problems and that we are open to all of us if you have any, any questions, any, any, uh, any, uh, if, you, if you need any information about Islam, about Muslims, what they are doing in the mosque, what we are, what we are hiding in the mosque, if you, if you want to, to, to know. We are open, the doors are open, you can come and reach us. One question we, we had earlier, uh, and I think you're probably the perfect person to answer it is, how is the Muslim community in Quebec coping with the aftermath uh, of, of the shootings? First of all, the people are hoping that they the going to reclaim the, the mosque as soon as possible to, 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 to start praying again and to start our activities in the, in the mosque again. And the second thing is, uh, is, is to stop this uh, hate message that has been spread out in the last uh, few years, I would say, uh, between the Muslims and the non-Muslims. Another question that we that we had, uh, some people were, were wondering how can they donate, uh, show any kind of financial support uh, to to the community here. Okay, uh, we we started a, a donation campaign for the families and for uh, the victims uh, on our Facebook. Uh, so I would advise them because the our website is 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 on hold right now. So go to our page on Facebook. You'll find a a, a, a link to how you're gonna donate uh, uh, online. And what about you yourself? How have you been coping with the last few days? I imagine it's been quite difficult. 
it was it was like uh, it was like uh, very very difficult moments between visiting uh, the 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 families visiting the the injured people in the hospitals uh, trying to prepare for the funerals uh, opening the mosque lot lot of things to do plus the the emotion that we 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 cannot pray as we used to pray in in our in our grand mosque i'll just ask you one last question what um what message would you like to send uh, to, to Canadians today who, uh, who have kind of watched on in, in, in shock and horror as what happened here? First of all, I, w I would like to talk about the strong message that we got from the authorities and from the people, our neighbors. It was a strong message from our, our neighbors here in the mosque, in the, 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 the Quebecois community, that uh, they are with us, they support us. The second message that I want to say it's uh, it's uh, it's from us to to the non-Muslims or to to the people who are different than us. Come, people, and listen from us. Know about us. Know what we are doing. We are open. We are reachable. If you want to come and uh, stop this this uh, this hate message that has been spread. Stop the Islamophobia that we we, we are living in right now. Thank you so much for your time. I uh, really appreciate it. Thank you. So you can you can hear how I mean that that gives you I think a, a perfect sense of how the how the community is is, is dealing the the, the strong uh, sense of resilience is coming from the, from the community itself. Um, so now we'll we'll go back uh, and answer a few more questions. We'll probably wrap this up in about five minutes or so. Um, uh, but just give me a second here as I as I load up uh, the next question. Laura uh, and Augusta. Tacos, uh, sorry if I'm not pronouncing that uh, uh, properly, but uh, she asks, what is being done about the rise of the alt-right in Canada? Is it being treated as a terrorist group? That's a good question. Um, you can, uh, again, uh, consult our website. We've done a series of articles about uh, the far right in Quebec, and that, that should give you uh, a bit of an overview of what the situation like is, at least in Quebec. Um, we, we've tracked a number, a number of these far-right groups in Quebec. It's important to say that most of them, if not all of them, have all openly denounced the terrorist, uh, uh, sorry, they've all denounced the, the, the violence here. They, they've sought to separate themselves from uh, uh, the shooting. They've denounced the, the, the action. Um, in terms of the alt-right in Canada, it's, it's, it's clearly not as um, entrenched. It doesn't enjoy the same level of support as it does in, in the United States. Um, right-wing extremism, per se, uh, hasn't been on, uh, hasn't received the same level of scrutiny as certainly uh, Islamic terrorism or Islamic extremism has in recent years. Um, I imagine that will change in uh, the months and years to come. The security uh, intelligence agencies uh, following 9-11 uh, essentially targeted that or, or felt that was that was the biggest threat they, they 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 established an infrastructure to deal with that it's difficult to say how um, uh, what resources they have uh, to monitoring uh, far-right groups um, I think uh, some CSIS, uh, ex CSIS analysts uh, have, have been speaking about this in the media um, I believe that there, there's some articles on on the on our website that, that can speak to that a bit more a bit more coherently about the the kind of uh, security side um, here, but what it is important to point out that in the in the, just in the hours after after the shooting, that uh, Quebec police forces here, both uh, both city police forces, uh, provincial Quebec provincial police, of Quebec, and the RCMP um, instigated a a terrorist response unit. So it's clearly um, even though that the suspect hasn't been charged with terrorist offenses. Um, it uh, police forces responded to the the, the event uh, as it were a, a terrorist act. Do we know? Uh, so Choi Kim asks, uh, "Do we know what his family uh, has to say?" Um, we do not. Uh, yet the, the family has not spoken out. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to assume that you're referring to the, the family of the suspect. We do not know what the, the family has to say. They haven't spoken out publicly um, at, at the moment. Um, we don't know if they will. Um, 
but we 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 know uh, very little about what 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 they 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 must be going through at the moment. We do know, as I mentioned just a few moments ago, we do know that the family home was was searched, uh, I believe, on Monday. Uh, we also know that the 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 residence, the the apartment building where the suspect lived with his twin brother, which is not far from here, um, uh, was searched also by police um, in the hours after after his arrest. Um, I think we'll take. Uh, no more questions. Uh, I think we're going to wrap it up. Uh, I just want to thank everybody for, for writing in. Um, we'll be continuing our coverage here, of course, for the next few days, at, at the very least. This is a, an issue we'll be tracking in, in, the mo in, the, in the weeks to come, in the aftermath, both at the political and the social level. Um, and so, so tune in uh, on all CBC uh, channels, and, and especially uh, check out our website at cbc.ca. Um, and we'll, we'll get as, uh, as much information to you as we can.